very common uh, issue in the English language that can give people problems is pronouns, uh, especially the personal pronouns that are used to stand in for nouns. And so uh, when we're looking at pronouns, there are three basic areas that you want to consider when you're looking at are you using pronouns correctly. Uh, the first pronoun situation is case. Uh, there's also agreement and there's also reference. What we're going to start with is pronoun case. Now, pronoun case is actually uh, a fairly simple idea, at least in English. It's whether I'm going to use I or me, uh, should I use he or him, they or them, which pronoun am I going to use? Now, in English, this is one of the few areas where English is actually easier than a lot of other languages. Uh, English is known as the most complicated language in the world because English has bits and pieces that have come in from a lot of different languages. And so you get some grammar rules that come from Latin and some rules that come from German or from French or from all over the place. And so English is mostly a very inconsistent language and therefore it can be harder to learn. However, in pronoun case, English is actually simpler than most others. Uh, in English, there are only two major pronoun cases to worry about. Um, and that is different from a lot of other languages. For example, Latin has seven cases. Uh, and if you want to get really complicated, Czech has 12. Uh, my kid brother now lives in Prague. He has a Czech wife and Czech kids. He has to deal with 12 pronoun cases. But in English, there are really only two cases that you have to worry about. Uh, there are a couple of more obscure ones. We won't worry about those, but the vast majority of the th times, there will only be two pronoun cases to think about. The first pronoun case is the subject case, which is I, you, he, she, it, we, you plural, or as my relatives in Arkansas would say, y'all, um, they, and who. So that's the subject case. There are two situations where you will use the subject case. One is if you have the subject of a sentence. That's pretty darn straightforward. I can start with a sentence, I went to the store. And so we have I as the subject. And so we know we use the subject case. We don't say me went to the store. That just doesn't sound right. We say I went to the store because it's the subject of the sentence. We use the subject case. Now, the other situation where you use the subject case is if you're renaming the subject following a linking verb. And this is somewhat obscure, especially in spoken English. You don't hear it very often. And in fact, this is misused so much of the time that when it's used correctly, it actually sounds awkward. And so, for example, if we have the contest winner was he, this sounds very weird. Most of the time you'd expect to see the contest winner was him because you're used to seeing the object form at the back end of a sentence and not the subject form. But if you want to be excruciatingly correct, you use the subject case here. And the way you can test whether you are renaming the subject, can you swap those two and the sentence still means the same? And in this case, yes, I can say he was the contest winner. And in fact, 
most of the time I probably would go ahead and rephrase the sentence uh, because it just sounds so awkward uh, to use this correctly because, as I said, it gets used incorrectly all of the time. Um, another example of this would be, for example, uh, if you're uh, back in the Dark Ages, when telephones were things that were plugged into the wall instead of things people carried around in the pocket. And so uh, you would uh, call some place rather than some person. And so you might say, oh, is Louie there? And if you're Louie, your usual response would be something like, oh, that's me. Well, that would be incorrect. Uh, to be absolutely correct, you would say, it is I, or this is he. Uh, now, if uh, you don't want to use that awkward construction, but you still want to be correct, again, rephrase the sentence. So you'd say, this is Louie. Um, unless, of course, it's a bill collector, in which case you'd say, oh, he's not home. But again, to be correct, you would say, uh, this is he. Or another example from way back in the Dark Ages, um, when uh, there was a Saturday morning cartoon called Dudley Do Right. And Dudley always did everything right. So when he arrived at the scene to save the day, he would always say, it is I, Dudley Do Right. And so once again, this is the correct one. It's not it is me, but it is I, Dudley Do Right. So you can remember that because Dudley Do Right always did everything right. Now, process of elimination. I've already told you that there are only two major cases in English. And I've also told you that these are the two situations where you use the subject case. So process of elimination makes it pretty easy. If we have the object case, which will be me, you, him, her, it, us, you or y'all, them, and whom. If we've already said these are the two cases, these are the two situations where you use the subject case, that lets us know all other situations are going to use the object case. And so what we have over here, if I went to the store, um, then uh, I bought something and the clerk gave me change. We don't say the clerk gave I change. We say the clerk gave me change because me is not renaming the subject. The subject is the clerk. And we're not um, being the subject of the sentence or either. And so you don't say the clerk gave I change. You say the clerk gave me change. So those are the basics of using 